fucking tell, god. Tell it on the podcast. Tell it on the podcast. No, I'm not. It's so dull. All two weeks. Oh, mate, you... Do you know what one woman said to me the other day? And I thought, you fucking slag. Double standards. If I was a woman, you would not fucking say that. I got to her door, and the first thing she said to me was, Oh, Mrs. been beating you. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, imagine if she was. How, like, that... Yeah, for like, male fun. domestic violence victims, that is um, not, like, advocating equality or anything, is it? I was like, fucking hell, love. Yeah, I hate women too. Ahoy there, and welcome to GOATS, the greatest show on the high seas. I'll be your captain for tonight, Sebek Lark. My shipmates this week are Commodore Vinny and Cabin Boy Michael, with special guest, back for another go, Helmsman Josh. Before we get started, don't... What? What? <laughs> Before we get started... <laughs> Don't forget, to, don't forget to tell all your friends about this shit show, as well as following us on Instagram and giving us a five-star rating on your podcast player of choice. And if you can afford it, oh, don't really? forget to give us a handful of booty on Patreon. Before we crack on, how are you we all doing? The recently or something? Why, the <laughs> Why are you asking fans for a handful of their booty? Yeah. <laughs> oh, classic, sir. There's a rape thing. God it's not a sense. rape thing. That No. <laughs> It's a play on words, and I'm role playing because it's a role. It's the, uh, uh, fucking uh, switch uh, on, uh, right? Uh, How are we all doing? I was a pirate or a massive twat. <laughs> well, if I was a massive twat, I'd just sound like you, wouldn't I? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Deflected. Uh, I'm gonna give you that. That's good. <laughs> right. How are we all done? How are we all doing? Fantastic, mate. Vinny, you've been on holiday. Shag any yeah. birds out there? Uh, well, I was on holiday with my family, so I hope not. <laughs> Shag any birds out there? Oh, <laughs> Don't ask the same question twice. <laughs> uh, no, I had a great time just drinking delicious red wine and eating delicious baguettes every day. And then I we all got COVID on the last day. Oh, and so the... <laughs> The, uh, the the ferry back home was all pretty awful. We were just all stuck in this cabin, all really mm. ill. And there was a baby who was refusing to eat and screaming the entire oh, time, gosh. the entire six mm. hours. Plus, it was really wavy, so we all got really sick as well. Oh, man, that is... <laughs> but, but when I got home, there was a 400 quid tax rebate waiting for me. So, mm. yeah, happy days. Nice. Happy days. Nice. Taking um, money from the poor. And the government. <laughs> I am the poor. Um, <laughs> Have you started a new job there, Vinny? Really, actually, because you said work's been really busy today. Or no, I just lied. He just lied oh. because he didn't want to do the fun <laughs> thing that I'd come up with. Oh yeah! No, by the way, everyone listening, dinner. I had this great idea to record this episode in a virtual studio in an MMORPG online, and basically we didn't do it because no one could be bothered. So. Whoa! Oh, oh, no. No. Hold on, that's not that was fair. Too much. We effort. didn't do it because you told us three hours before we were supposed to do it, guys. I've got this great idea. Please, can we make this very complicated, difficult thing happen? And we're all like, "We, you, we can't. We're busy right until the time we record." And even you were busy. <laughs> so, yeah. You work basically, until, and you get home, and then you record straight away. So when we <laughs> look, mate, I make dreams come true. Josh, what have you been up to? Um, so his last three victims. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I have. Uh, I've just also recently gotten back from holiday. Uh, been down in a uh, big up Cornwall, down nice. south. Uh, go there every year. Always has been. Love it there. Uh, that's why I'm slightly browner than I was last time. You do um, look very brown, Josh. Yeah, very well, Turkish looking, you know. Yeah. I thought it was a filter, but brown and i have to say josh you're looking very trim you're looking good oh, thank you i've been eating nothing but chicken and rice and broccoli for about three months now and going to the gym so something must be working fucking hell mate unbelievable yeah, that stuff that, who would have thought that eating well and exercising would be i know i may i do it all the time i have like on and off insomnia and eventually i'll be like what if i just try 
not going on my phone until two in the morning, eating a yeah. bit better and going to the gym. And I'm like, yeah. this is amazing. Oh I feel God, so yeah. much better. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Yeah, I do. I do feel like it's very simple. It's just you got to have the motivation to want to do it. Definitely. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. the simplest, the simplest things are the hardest. Like my cock. Yeah. Now, Michael, okay. what have you been up to? <laughs> um, not a lot really. Uh, got in a fight with uh, a few lads down the pub. Um, mm. yeah. You should have fucking seen them though. I've got this, mate. They are all dead. <laughs> Jesus. So, Isn't your local pub Christ. just your kitchen? Because you don't really have a pub. Uh, no, it's a proper pub. Um, it's still got carpets on the floor. I've been in there once for a dare uh, with a couple of our mates, and um, you can ask them. It's not the place you ever want to go. Not because it's rough. It's not like you're not going to get like stabbed. It's just uh, look. Put it this way: it's vile. It's just vile. It's, it is. It's so rural. Mm. Michael's too brown to get in. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, like it literally it's like it's like owned by a private bloke. Like he just owns it outright. It's not like a pub that, you know, normally they're like kind of franchises and stuff, aren't they? Well that's a good yeah. thing. We should be supporting independent businesses, Michael. No, because he just locks the door to anyone who's not like his four mates. And so would they I, would I piss in the carpets my... and the dogs like shit on the floor and then you go in there as a a local village man trying to go to the local pub and it's just like silence and eyes and you're like hello and they're just like fuck off <laughs> okay sorry <laughs> so you're saying that i wouldn't be able to get in with my new turkish look you would you would never ever right. get in because you've never been to Finland for a start and then even if you had even even if you were born bred and lived in Finland for your entire life you unless you've sucked off the owner you're not getting in wow i mean i'm not even funny it's josh better. with that tan you actually just wouldn't get into Finland. <laughs> they just chase you out. <laughs> it is an absolute shithole. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right. Well. I mean, yeah. On that note, um, yeah. we'll probably have to bleep a lot of that and maybe just cut some of it. But anyway, so how you doing, Sebek? Oh yeah, I'm alright. Uh, got a new tattoo. Um, oh yeah, I saw. Oh, oh, yeah, good. Fish fishing. What was it? No, was it's a, a fish it's a, or a rat? It's an otter. <laughs> It's an oh, otter that's rats. fishing. Um, a rat would have been cool. There's nothing wrong with rats. It looked like a little. I don't know. It looked like a gopher or something. It's an otter. Um, it's a little otter. He's fishing. He's got a little, got a little vest on and a little hat. Yeah. Just for his cute. Box. Um, but yeah, I, the, I mean, I'm quite glad I got it because I was planning. I've got a few pieces lined up, and the one after the one that I'm getting on my chest in a couple of weeks or a couple of months, I should say. I was going to get a half leg sleeve, like from my knee down. And mm. the back of my leg that I had tattooed re uh, on fr on Sunday was by far, and away, by far and away the most painful thing I've ever willingly mm. been through. It was absolute mm. agony. And I've, have a fair like I've got a few tattoos, they're all on my arms and they've all been fine. I literally sat down, I said to Kaylee who was tattooing, I was like, if I fall asleep, are you allowed to keep tattooing? That's how cocky I was. I was like, mm. if I if yeah. I doze off, are you allowed to keep going? I was yeah. so far from being asleep, it is unbelievable. Yeah. I came I back, know. my clothes were sodden with sweat. Like absolutely yeah. I could wring them out. It was so painful. I know everyone's like, oh, no tattoos hurt, and it's like, no, no, they they don't hurt in certain places, and in certain places they fucking hurt. Like I, I've only ever had my ass tattooed, for instance, but I can tell you for a fact that it fucking kills. Yeah, well, this it is, is the really thing. painful. You think like squidgy bits would be better, but it's not. You want like nice, smooth, flat bits. Yeah, like, fairly firm, yeah. Like, you don't want a big chunk of muscle like that. Anyway, but yeah, it was good. I'm really happy with the tattoo. I always forget as well, every time you get a tattoo, you think the pain of the tattoo is the worst bit. It's not. It's the itching. No. It's the itching for yeah. the next four weeks. It's fucking four horrific. Four weeks? Oh, yeah. Wow. It takes ages. Oh my God. Like, clothing rubs on it and yeah. stuff. Like, you can't get on your ass. You can't sit down. Yeah. You can't go it swimming. on your chair, yeah. And also, if you yeah. fuck it up, you can, like, fuck up the tattoo as well. Like, especially for the first week, yeah. you have to be so careful. It's, yeah. it's good, but, like, it's a ball like Nappy cream, yeah, yeah, or a bit of a ball like. Anyway, mm. shall we move on? Yeah. We shall. If the goal of a video game is escapism, which I believe it probably is, in my humble opinion, I think escapism is probably... the It's the purest reasoning behind any entertainment, really is the escape. 
Well, we're being a bit more technical than that, aren't we, Michael? Um, <laughs> fun. fun. <laughs> no, Jacob. Yeah, yeah, how dare you have fun, Michael? You're yeah, supposed to. How dare you have fun in your life, you fucking. No, that's true, no, actually. No. Well, <laughs> after fun, I'd say escapism is probably up there. You know, I would yeah. say for me, that's why I play games is to escape. And yeah. I would say no genre does that better than role playing video games or rpgs mm. now they were obviously inspired by the og rpgs of the 70s like D, &D proper yeah. fucking pen and paper people got oh, hurt yeah. man um and they those games <laughs> like the rpgs that came after them opened up an entire world of fantasy and imagination to um, to, to sort of fall into i feel yeah. like the the truest signal of a good rpg for me is like when there's a fantasy world that you feel like is fully fleshed out you feel like every mm. single facet of the universe that you're enjoying is there to be explored um whether you make that up in your own head or whether you're enjoying someone else's creation and from galloping around velen as the brooding geralt was it geralt i've always said geralt i think it's geralt yeah, yeah i think it's a geralt yeah yeah to I mean, geralt Gerald. Gerald. Yeah, why not? Gerald. You're not like Gerald. Do you want to go and kill some monsters, lad? No, I'm a bit tired. I want to go to Hall House from, instead. Uh, 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 lad from Clarkson's Farm. Oh, yeah. What's his name? Fucking. Gerald. Gerald. <laughs> oh, yeah. Anyway. Um, so, from galloping around as Gerald to repeatedly getting your ass fucking handed to you in Dark Souls, or even forming a guild taking on bosses and eventually getting groomed in World of Warcraft. Nothing <laughs> gives you a better oh, wow. escape from real life <laughs> than as an RPG. Getting groomed is a bit of an escape, I suppose. Mate, it's, it's the classic... <laughs> 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 an escape from safety. Yeah, it's so... <laughs> that's how you know that you're playing a proper RPG. If someone starts asking how old you are and where you live, that's when you fucking... That's when you're on the real shit. Because the RPG, man. Um, but yeah... Uh. Look. Nothing gives you a better escape from real life than a good video game RPG. But mm. which is best? Well, as I'm sure you can see or hear, I have assembled a crew of the most autistic people I could find. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to go first? Me, me. I want to go first. All right, Vinny, you can go first. Okay. I'm going to get a timer going. I wanted to now. go first. Well, you didn't fucking well, say anything, did you, Michael? Too fucking late, mate. Mrs. Well, asked you if she smelled of B.O. You have to tell her no, don't you? I was busy. <laughs> <laughs> she just texted you, do I smell of B.O.? You should have been like, mate. I can smell of B.O. in my car. I said no. <laughs> you should have said, I can smell it from here, love. Fucking hell. Seb can smell it, and he's 200 miles away. Should oh, I let some like eye emojis? Should I message, <laughs> no else. Should I message Jen just a gif like... Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mate, goat prank, stir some shit up with your missus, mate. <sighs> right, Vinny. The time is starting now. For those of you who are new to the format, obviously, I do feel like the people who've tuned in for Goat RPG are probably some of the more long standing listeners. I don't think um also I like how we timed it that it's gonna be Amy, so we're going to get in a bunch of whole new listeners, all for like zany, exciting things, and then we've got yeah. back to back goat historical battle and goat yeah. video game RPG. That'll fucking keep them in. Oh. They'll keep me in. Mate, sure. it'll keep me fucking hard, mate. Right, anyway. What are we going to do? I think we need to do like goat internet influencer next episode, then, you know, bring it back. We Good actually. Again. <laughs> yeah, get get like Go Love Island contestant on the go. That'll get better. Actually, no, get fuck that. If this show ever if this show ever gets to Goat Love Island contestant, I guarantee that it's me, Vinny and Seb are not fucking hosting it. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. We've we've <laughs> sold our souls to fucking Spotify. <laughs> They're white anymore. They've got slits down their hair. They're called Jacob, Jake and Jack John. and <laughs> They talk about chicken and rice and go into the gym every day. Oh, yeah. shit. Josh! Yeah. Josh, get out, mate! Have these guys got any openings? <laughs> mate, they got one you could be in, mate. Anyway. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't even know what that meant. Um, right. Too sexy for me. Vinny, <laughs> now, you know, as I was getting onto before we descended into fucking nonsense immediately, 
Yeah. More long standing listeners of know will know. More long standing as more long standing listeners of this podcast will know, when it's a foursome and not just a threesome, there's only ten minutes on the clock for each contestante. Mm-hmm. So, Vinny, you've told me that you've colour coded your script. And that gives me a lot of yeah. hope, not just for how autistic you are, mm-hmm. but for how quickly we're going to get through this episode. <laughs> so, Vinny, without further ado, let please let the verbal diarrhea commence. At the turn of the second millennia, Bethesda <laughs> no, Studios... Straight away, gone for it. <laughs> we are knee-deep levels of autism right now already. <laughs> No, 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 warming the bitch up, just straight away. Slot it in. <laughs> I'm ready to speed run this bitch. <laughs> Let's go okay. with the ride. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Right, right Vinny, go, 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 go. Speed clock. Turn of the second millennia, Bethesda Studios was in big financial troubles. Despite their original IP, The Elder Scrolls, doing fine in sales, their other developed games did not do so fine. With the company only being able to finance one last project, we began work on what would become The Elder Scrolls III Morrowind. Not only was it an instant hit with reviewers being handed several Game of the Year awards, but it was an instant success with the consumer market as well, propelling both Bethesda and Morrowind's project leader, Todd Howard, into the household names we know them as today. So what is Morrowind then? Well, it's a first-person action RPG set in the high-fantasy, magical land of Tamriel. The story goes that you are a prisoner of any chosen sex, race, and background who has been escorted to the brutal and hostile island of Vardenfell, home of the Dark Elves. Upon arriving, you can either pick a pre-made class, or more fun, you could just customize your own class. Picking from a pool of 27 skills, you could be anything you want to be. Afterwards, you're freed and told to deliver a package to some dude in the neighboring city, but you absolutely do not have to. And that's the first main appeal of Morrowind. Freedom. You can go wherever you want, you can play however you want, and you can be whoever you want. The game doesn't pigeonhole players into the main quest, or any quests if they don't want to. You could just explore the nearby caves, or find out what's going on beyond those mountains in the distance, or even just Ask around town, see if there's any side quests to do. It's completely up to you on how you want to play the game. You can even kill anyone you want in the entire game. Really? Yeah, it doesn't matter how significant they are to the plot. Well, they because they can't, they don't want they don't want the players <laughs> killing kids, so they, they yeah. there isn't any kids. Uh, oh, I know. That was the worst <laughs> bit about Skyrim. <laughs> yeah, I, I would rather they just didn't have kids because it's yeah, annoying because that you can't. You, like, and and you, and you just want to be like, fucking Fusro, ah, oh, that little fucker, yeah. like a mile away, and he just and he they, just stands there looking yeah. at you. Yeah, you just like, start like hitting with a sword, and he just like stands there like, oh, mommy. Die. Yeah. <laughs> Confessions of a serial killer. Damn, I can't <laughs> kill the kids. This sucks. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> It's interesting that you can kill anyone no matter how important to the story, though, because you can't do that in Skyrim at all. Yeah, or Oblivion. It's really annoying mm. in that stuff, because it's fun to just, like, quick save and then just be like, right, I'm just going to go on a murder spree, you know, mm. just the fun of it, and then realise yeah. you can't kill half the characters around you because they're important to the plot. Yeah, exactly. Sucks. Yeah, that's cool, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, you can kill anyone you want. The only thing is, if they are important to the plot, it will say, a little text thing will come up saying, you have severed the, the ties of prophecy, basically saying... You might want to restart your game because something's going to do good. this or do that. Yeah, yeah some like important quests will be broken way down the line or something. But the option's always there. Mm. <clears throat> the second thing players might appreciate is the actual world itself. Morrowind has maybe the most unique, strange, and fascinating world I've ever explored. It's absolutely like nothing I've ever played in a video game before. Despite it carrying the usual tropes of elves and magic, it's like you're in a totally alien world. The people of Morrowind don't eat chicken eggs. They harvest eggs from these giant insect-like creatures called quava. They don't ride on horses from place to place. They sit atop silt striders, these massively tall alien-looking squid creatures which use their giant tendril-like legs to walk across any terrain. Countrysides are littered with mushroom trees in some regions, 
whilst other parts may be more akin to African savannas or even ash-filled dead wastelands, wizards live in giant mushroom towers they've erected, whilst the people of Aldrune live in a giant, hollowed-out crab husk. <laughs> Despite its otherworldliness, everything in the world makes sense. It feels very grounded and feels very lived in. There's a lot of complicated history and a lot of depth to the the history and the, the factions and the characters and the people of this game. Hell, we'd be here for hours if we were to just discuss the game's politics, like the internal politics between mm. all the factions. And there are also countless memorable characters you come across in your travels, such as the mentor for much of the main quest, a man by the name of Caius Casadas. He's yeah, an old legend. dude. He's an old dude. He looks like Putin, doesn't ever wear a shirt, and has a crippling scuba addiction. And quite Sounds frankly, like he's, he's your best friend in the whole map, the whole fucking oh. world, whole game. What scuba? <laughs> Is it a drug? Yeah. It's kind of like, it's, it's basically like, like crack. Yeah, nice. it's made from moon sugar, which is like their version of cocaine, right? So, yeah. It's like crack rocks, yeah. Wow. But yeah, you can even see like underneath his bed, because that's where he like gives quests from, his like, his like room. Underneath his bed is like, like a little like spoon and like some skooma and shit. Oh, <laughs> drug <laughs> that's and incredible. Yeah. Flashlight. <laughs> <laughs> Sonic flashlight. Oh, oh no, that's amazing. Oh no. <laughs> Oh. oh dear! That was on the Instagram post. Yeah, that you made. <laughs> yeah, you know, it was actually representative of Vin Vinny's room. It's true. I do have one. You, you missed out the most important part about this guy. He's like late fifties, and he's got like the best six pack you've ever seen. Really. Like, <laughs> yeah, he's, like, he's flaunting it. Yeah, like, he is not wearing a top. How good though? Like fucking Power Rangers, good. Like Power Ranger action figures got like a fifteen pack. Like or... he is fucking cut. That, that's What's this guy's there. name? He's massive. <laughs> like Ricky. Can't, how am I spelling like that? Yeah, good luck spelling this. It's like C A I U S. C A I U S and then Cosades or Casades. Oh I found it, yeah. Fucking hell. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Can you Christ. this so I can see it? Soon? Oh in my all his, God, like, Lord. Rule 34 corner. In all his yeah, I'll put, it, I'll put it in the Rule 34 corner. I don't know why we have this corner. And why is there a man wearing a thong surfing? Fuck's sake, look at this guy. <laughs> look at his face. <laughs> that, I have to say, that really, that's a massive tick in the box for Morrowind. That's gone from like a here to a here. Look, he's uh, like fucking like he's like full on balding, like grey hair, and just yeah. like the the body like twenty year olds wish they oh, had. God. He's so vain. He's so muscular on his shoulders it's turned into like armor plating. <laughs> like what is wrong with his fucking arm? Look at those <laughs> delts, boy. Jesus oh, Christ. Christ. Look at that fella. Peak human form. It reminds me of like Draco Malfoy if he was like fucking jacked. Because of the white hair, is that it? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, they have sense from. That's who they based him on. <laughs> That's my dad. Oh, I wish Kai was oh, my dude. dad. Oh, moon sugar. What, daddy. addicted to crack? That's <laughs> <laughs> the good shit. Um, <clears throat> so. What's the actual gameplay of Morrowind like? Well, much of your time in the game will consist of traveling from town to town, talking to the locals and fighting various monsters, demons, fucking creatures, banders, etc. All whilst the incredible soundtrack plays in the background. A soundtrack so good that composer Jeremy Soule used a lot of the songs, including the really famous main theme, which you all know as the Dover King song, in all of the Elder Scrolls games post-Morrowind. Really? Yeah. It was originally the main theme for oh. Morrowind, and then it was basically everyone liked it so much they just made it the main theme for Oblivion mm. and Skyrim. Yeah, it goes hard. <clears throat> a lot of quests. A lot of the quests have multiple. Yeah, that's the one. A lot of the quests have multiple ways to complete them. For example, if you had a quest to just get a particular item from someone, there are always at least three different ways you can go about it. You could just go up and murder the fella and just take it from his body. Or you could sneakily pickpocket him. Or you could just talk to him 
gain his trust, and maybe he'll just hand it over without any fuss. And chop his head off. There is never... That was, that was the That's... first option, and you didn't need to make it weird. That's my <laughs> confessions of a serial killer. <laughs> Hitman. I used to play Hitman 2, I think, a lot when I was a kid, and you can go in yeah. sneaky beaky right and all that, and I was just like, nah. It's just fucking... If you kill every I'm single playing. person on the map, you get you just win anyway. Like, it's fine. It's just the best way. Yeah, Anything like that, just kill everyone. Just kill everyone, and then you're done. One day when we're famous <laughs> enough, I want to be able to ask someone to make a compilation of all the really scary stuff Michael said. <laughs> not for, not to not to put out not to put out it's just for when he does do something it'd be good to have it as evidence yeah it'll be titled under our noses the entire time yeah no, well, killing people in video games does not account for real world violence you know that yeah, yeah but, but if all... you do both then it's fucked yeah exactly <laughs> i'm not saying you that always... for regular people i just think you've said some things that make me suspicious it was like somebody at some point recently said to me in real life, I can't remember who it was, about the fact that it might be video games causing these French riots. <laughs> was it? They were serious. And I can't remember who it was. And I was like, no, that's just what the media says. It what, Because they're young people writing, they're pissed off. I was like, it, it's nothing to do with video games. I can't remember who it was, but. That was a real conversation I had. It's bizarre, isn't it? Are you sure it wasn't with Jen? It's something she would say, but it definitely wasn't her, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, Vinny, you ready? Yeah. So <laughs> there, there is never a correct way to do any of the quests, and whichever creative way you want to go about it is always completely up to you, the player. And another notable thing about the game is that there aren't any quest markers. Just what? a map really? and a journal. How the fuck like, do you find anything? You talk to people. Yeah. Well, this is the thing. You talk to people and they tell you where the things are. I know. But once they've said that, out. do you have to like write it down? Because <clears throat> when no, I... no, no, no. Because the journal, the, the journal system, it, it like auto writes out what they've said. Oh, and it just tells so you them. have to go back in the journal and read where they were. Well, it it'll be the last thing they. It'll be it because it's. The journal's done by, like, the most recent thing. It will be the most recent thing. It will, like, show up instantly. So if you're just on a quest, it will be the first thing that pops up. But then you have to look at what they said, look at the map, work out where, and walk out there, and there's not just a big marker that I can run at. Well, yeah, because they'll, they'll give you directions, like, in real life. And I was going to say, imagine it's like you've asked for directions to the nearest, like, Greg's in, like, a city you don't know, and they'll say, like, go down there, turn left onto that street, and... Yeah, past the green bin. Mate, so there's like no that. there's no mini map where I can just run at the like because like say I'm playing the witch well, map, but, but there's, there's no, no like mark, there's no marker on the map. Oh fucking hell, that sounds well long. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good. It's that's my favorite thing. Yeah. That's my favorite thing about the Witcher is like you just put a mark down, get on the you fucking. You don't look at the rest of the game. You, you just, just run at, at it. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> just across hills, <laughs> fucking anything, crashing through villages. Get out of my fucking way! Like I never it's take a, a path. Line. I just literally just <laughs> beeline everywhere. So and they're like a little cutscene will play, and then like a little kid will come out and be like, "I need your help," and I'm like, "Fuck off, mate! I've got places to be. Run straight past. I've got no time for extra content. I just want to get to where I'm going." There are two types of people in the world. Definitely, <laughs> yeah. you it, two types of different ways of enjoying art. Some people like that. It's not that overwhelming, like, oh, I literally have to discover everything for myself. And then some people will just like, oh, I'm stuck, fucking Google it. Or like, yeah, just go run straight in a straight line like that. Yeah. Obviously. Like, once I get, like, fucking... Two sides of the Once line. I get, like, what's it called? Fucking quick travel. I'm just, like, fucking... I don't know. I'm just like... Boom, 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 boom. I'll quick travel from one end of a city to another. I'm ah, uh, fuck it. I don't care. <laughs> I always hated, like instant fast travel in games because it, it it would end up being like i would just be looking at a t like a loading screen for half the time yeah playing, that's so isn't true. really fun it's really like a level game then like fucking mario where you just go from one to the next without like the journey in between like, imagine if after every level of mario you had to actually walk to the next level through the mushroom kingdom and like meet all the little geezers and that well mm. you kind of do no yeah. you don't and the newer ones you do yeah you do oh. no, it's like mario 64 you do Oh, well, I'm talking yeah. about the OG, you know what I mean? Hmm. You're not from the 80s. <laughs> 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 anyway. So much of the time, you'll be figuring out where you're supposed to go or using the directions given to you. 
uh, sorry, to go using the directions given to you. But it is completely fine to just get lost. You're sure to stumble into something else really interesting, like another side quest or some dwarven ruins or something. Getting lost is part of the fun of the game. And all this culminates in Morrowind being simply the most engaging and immersive RPG I've ever played, especially as the whole thing takes place in first per person, allowing you to fully immerse yourself into the world. Mm -hmm. The entire game feels like just one massive adventure where there are no wrong answers and you are just rewarded for taking your time, talking to the locals for advice and exploring. feels like you're actually in a real world. And there are, of course, tons of side quests across the game, but there are also a total 14 different factions you can join, which all have their own huge quest lines to complete. From the Dark Elves' religious cults, to the fully legal Assassin's Guilds, to even joining one of the Vampire Clans, there is a hell of a lot of content to discover. And there's also the main quest of the game, which, if I had more time, I would love to go into detail about. I but I don't have any time, so I'm just <laughs> going to say that it's my favorite main quest line from any game I've ever played, and I'm just going to leave it like that. I would not be... Sorry, I would be remiss to not mention... The modding scene of the game too. Morrowind shipped out with something called the construction set. Now this construction set allowed players who had no programming knowledge whatsoever to easily create their own mods for the game without any hassle, opening up the modding scene massively to the point where even to this day, over 20 plus years after the game's release, there are still countless mods being made by the community. Tamriel Rebuilt is one such of these mods. It's a massive community project where people are creating the entire mainland part of Morrowind with NPCs, cities, quests, caves, dungeons, everything to boot. Mainland Morrowind is about twice the size of Vardenfell, which is the place you're in in the regular vanilla Morrowind. So it's a huge task, and they've been regularly releasing new content for it for more than maybe even two decades at this point. I, I think they've been going since like 2004 or 2005 Jesus and Christ. they're still going and they're, they're only speeding up they've only been getting like better each time yeah 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 <clears throat> open morrowind is another incredible project where modders have essentially remade the entire game from the ground up using a modern programming language and it's also completely open source which if you don't know what that means it essentially means it's very very easy to just customize it to your heart's content it's very very easy there's even multiplayer with Open Morrowind, so you can play the game completely with your friends. And Josh can attest to this. It is, it works perfectly, doesn't it? It's like it's startling it how good it works. Yeah, like, we it, did it. It was good. Nothing wrong with it at all. It's perfect. Right? It's like you're playing the game with your mate. Yeah. It's so yeah. good. Does Open In Morrowind conclusion... still Sorry. look like old Morrowind? Uh, yeah, but you know, I just play with like extra packs and stuff, and I think the game looks really nice with texture packs. Cool. Uh, in conclusion, that's right. We're at the end. I was going to say, Seb, have you been timing this bitch? Because yeah, this yeah, he's fine. Like... He's got. He's like. He's he's eight seconds over. I'm willing to hear his conclusion. Oh, right, okay. It's, it's, I've got a paragraph left. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> in conclusion, Morrowind is the single most unique RPG I have ever played. It's rich with depth in both its lore, history, but also its mechanics has endless playstyle possibilities and genuinely one of the best modding communities I've ever seen. It's the sort of game that makes you really think. And if you're stuck on a quest or you just don't know where to go, the fan wiki is genuinely, honestly, the best gaming wiki I have ever read. It culminates every tiny, tiny, minute detail that you want to know about the game whilst remaining super easy to navigate and read. It is un... It's... It's way better than it should be. Like it, it's so unbelievably good. Better it's than the, the game... Christian wiki. <laughs> well, I'm seeing gaming wikis. <laughs> <laughs> so that it's shit. Until release. <laughs> <laughs> releases Christian RPG. Like <laughs> I would not be shocked if that really exists. <laughs> There's no way. I would fucking play the shit out of a Christian <laughs> <laughs> right up until the end level, and then I would never ever. Yeah, don't I'll finish that game. That shit right <laughs> off. It's a terrible ending. It's a dark ending. Ninety-nine percent completion rate is the uh, she is the actual aim of that game. <clears throat> but yeah, 
Morrowind. It's the game that saved Bethesda, and it's my personal favorite game of all time, and that's why I think it's the Go RPG. Mm-hmm. Well, Vinny, that mm-hmm. was really interesting. I've known of your love for Morrowind, but I yeah. didn't actually know anything about Morrowind, and I deliberately kept myself from looking into it because I knew you'd probably pick it. Um, but now seems like a good time to reveal a bit of a curveball in this episode. Good question, though. I've got a question for Vinny about his um about about his fucking presentation. Right, crack feet. on. Okay. All right. Would you fuck Todd Howard then? If it was like five years ago, maybe. Because he's since well, ever since Fallout well, like seventy six. Yeah, I know. That's like his black mark, isn't it? Because because of all the Starfield content, I've been like ingesting like an endless void i'm just like god this guy's fucking sick man this guy's so cool <laughs> and i obviously did like morrowind and all the other cool Bethesda. like i just feel like he's yeah. the goat of game developers i don't even know what you would call him he's like the face of it all isn't he? he's like he's just the boy he's like right? a lead designer i think yeah. The, yeah he was he was the project he leader for morrowind. i don't know what he did for, was he project leader for oblivion as well i think so yeah he has been since morrowind doesn't he because I don't know if he's been project. I was he project leader for Skyrim? Like, because I I think yeah, he's surely. Or is he yeah. like, like a CEO type thing? He, he's like on the board of directors. I felt, I like yeah. looked into it. I know he's, he's, like, he's doing one more game. He's doing Elder Scrolls Six after Skyfield, Starfield, and then that's it. He's, he's oh, uh, so maybe he was like a big hand yeah. in like. Well, yeah, because I I all I know is that Skyrim plays on Todd Howard's fridge. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, he's the don. He him and that fat guy. Are the fucking Dons that are Donnies? I can't remember what that Gabe fat Newell. guy's called. Gabe He's Newell. got glasses. Gabe Newell. Yeah, I think. Yeah, he... yeah. Is he the guy who made Half Life? Yeah, Gabe, yeah, Gabe Newell is. He is the Godfather of PC gaming. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine yeah, it, I right? Think it's out of the boys, because you know, is yeah. Valve like it's the back of the guy's head with like a little tap on it? Yeah. Yeah. Ah, uh, you can tell this guy's not an OG. It's nowadays it's on the back of the head. It used to be back in the day on the eye at the front. Oh, well, for the long time, I thought that that was a picture of that fat guy's the back of his head. It's just like Gabe's shaven head, yeah. <laughs> imagine, right? Imagine if as as Elder Scrolls Six comes out, right? Hmm. The lead developers are listed as Todd Howard and Gabe Newell and Ooh. and Hideo Kojima. Oh, <laughs> I feel like what the fuck is this game gonna be? Yeah, like... <laughs> it's like a super band. Cute. Yeah. Oh my god. I don't know. I feel like the creative differences would be too much. It's like why you yeah. can't get like I imagine you can't just get eleven of the best football players and put them on the same team and it's the best. Yeah, PSG. you're right. PSG. You can't PSG. PSG. Messi, Neymar, and Mbappe. It doesn't work, fam. <laughs> it doesn't there's too work. many big, too many big too many energies. egos. Yeah. 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 You need there's to only gel. there's only room for one giant dick in an orgy. And remember that, kids. Remember that. Didn't need to say kids. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Confessions of a <laughs> right. Uh, anyway, <laughs> moving swiftly on, as I was uh, before, I was rudely interrupted by Michael's yeah. weird orgy kid thing. Um, I was about to <laughs> say <laughs> that I have made a little bit of a change to the format, without you mm. guys knowing. Um, now okay. I'm going to actually aim this at Josh. You make us play Roblox. I'm no, I'm not. No, no, no one's. <laughs> Uh, no. I no, mean, no one's playing. Really no one's playing Roblox, right? Okay. Josh, would you like to know? Can you guess what annoys me the most as a goat host? What What's the most frustrating thing that can happen as a host? Mm. Probably say maybe technical difficulties with the, your fellow presenters. Can get ready for <laughs> not me, fam. Not me. Fam. Right, that's a very good. Very good answer, actually. But I would say one of the most frustrating things is, is people talking about something they don't really know about. You know, maybe Ooh. something they've just seen at the top of a list or mm. something, a film they've never watched, a book Do they've never read. Um, so I've got, for all three of you, this is why I asked you for what you'd pitch. I've got three questions about your chosen mm-hmm. subject. And they're not just any questions. They're really hard questions. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I've got I don't some... know the names of names and shit, man. I... I've got some other news. <laughs> if you get 
three three questions right that's fine oh great i think you'll think you're fantastic if you get two questions right that's that's good you know fair play if you get one question right they are hard but if you get no questions right you're disqualified you can't win Oh, no. Because I refuse to, ch- I refuse to crown a goat that you are not truly passionate about. And if you didn't, oh, no. if you were passionate about it, then you'd know the answers. Oh no! So <laughs> oh, no. I Let's sense- show you how much I've played. No, no, no. I, I sense a curveball. I sense a curveball. What if all of us get nothing right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Guys, if we just all get it wrong, band together. <laughs> I, I also wanted to say as well that if um, if one of your fellow contestants shouts out the answer before you get it, that that doesn't count as you getting it. So you could be thrown under the bus by your fellow contestants. No, oh. Josh, oh, Josh knows oh. all about Marwins. You're in you trouble, Vinny. I don't know shit about You're in trouble. trouble. But I actually only told you like, the genre of the game. I didn't tell you the specific games that I picked. So maybe you're gonna ask, yeah, you're gonna ask me questions about shit I'm not even picking. Well, that's, unfo- that's unfortunate, isn't it? Oh, oh no! Oh, oh god! <laughs> anyway, I think we should probably crack on. So, oh, Morrowind, your three questions for Morrowind, Vinny. Oh no! Um, I don't know how Michael to. Cook, right, fuck. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? I just, I've got to say, I don't actually know how difficult the questions are. I just know they feel difficult to me because it sounds like garbled nonsense. But these could be really easy. Um, okay. But what... First question. What two weapons do you need to get inside you the gun? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. My man. My man. My man. My man. My man. How have you just done that, Vinny? That was impressive. Right. Question, question number two. <laughs> Question. This guy's a true Morrowind fan. Quick, quick, quick. Uh, second question. Which Ashlander's camp's wise woman gives you the prophecies uh, of the Neverine? Never, no, no, I don't Neverine. know the names. I don't know oh, the it's names got like a really them. weird name, hasn't it? They all have really crazy names. It's like not like an English know. name. Uh, yeah, no. I, it's like, I, oh, does, I don't know the name of it. Does it begin with Z? You're very close no, alphabetically. Why? Begins with a U. You, oh, it's like the Yushunka Uzbekistan clan or something. It's U, it's U, U, Shilaku, U Shilaku. Oh, yeah, okay, fair, fair. Right, and mm. finally, your final question, Vinny. I mean, luckily you're not disqualified. Um, <laughs> Fucking hell. I should hope not with that answer. Jesus, right. he should win the whole thing. That was insane. You didn't even finish for half the sentence. I heard two weapons and I knew exactly what you were talking about. Um, <laughs> to be fair, that was impressive. <laughs> Last question. To cure yourself of corpus, you visit a wizard of which great house? Oh, the house of Telvani. Is yes. The Fucking hell, Vinny. Fair play. Yeah. Was Fair gonna, play. He, was originally in my, he was originally in my script, actually. I was going to talk about him because he, he, he's one of the memorable characters that cloned himself but uh, into three women and he calls them his daughter wives. Oh. And yes, he has sex with them. Oh. Yeah. I could <laughs> tell weird guy. He cloned himself into three women. I could tell there was going to be something funky going on. <laughs> yeah. Telvani wizards are weird people. Well, yeah. Vinny, I just want to say congratulations. You know, you've proved oh. that you do genuinely <laughs> care about the, uh, the, the thing that you put forward, about the pick that you put forward. And, you know, congratulations. The other two of you. Get a bit nervy now because oh, uh, because I didn't even tell you the specific game, so I can't. Mine could be about any. I think there are nine in the series. Yeah, well, you should have been more specific. Well, I. Uh... Anyway, I've picked questions that are quite wide. Anyway, um, who wants to go next? We're not doing a middle bit, by the way. They, they, those little quizzes replace a middle bit. Right. Um. I'll oh, fuck it then. I'll go next. All right. Be the best. I mean, of last. Misery. At least if I get disqualified, I don't have to do anything now. <laughs> <laughs> Just give him the questions now so we don't have to listen to this. <laughs> but also, by you ask, asking me questions about the thing I've picked, there's a the big reveal of what I've picked in my script is not going to be revealed anymore. Well, to me and Joshua. Yeah, right? and to the listener. No, because they'll know what I've picked because you're about to ask me a question specifically about no, the game. No, I'm going to ask you the or... questions at the end. I ask you the questions at the end of every little speech. 
Oh, I see. I thought that we were doing all the questions now. No, right, no, okay. no, 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 no. Okay, sorry. My brain is on catch up. Your brain's on fucking freak out because you know you've been right. caught out. Listen. Okay, I understand. I understand. <laughs> old muscly dude. Right. <laughs> it's Cassie's Cassandra. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he literally is daddy, daddy Caius. Oh, moon sugar daddy. Right. <laughs> oh, hang on. By the way, Mork, your your up. time has started. No, fuck off. Shut up. <laughs> Thirty-five <laughs> seconds. I love bullying Mork Shh. on this podcast. <laughs> Fucking, you're pissing me off, fam. <laughs> right. I'm ready. So. Can you start time with me now? Yeah, all right. I'll give you one reset. There we go. Firstly, I was thinking about myself as a gamer, right? I love FPS games. I always have. Halo and Card are my staple, and I love them. I also... I'm quite good at FIFA. I'm pretty good at FIFA, I would say. Um, Whenever I play with the boys, I can normally normally go unbeaten all night. Um, and that fills me with great pride to be the best at something, even if that something is ultimately pointless, meaningless, and means I have absolutely no life. Mm. Um, but obviously, this episode isn't about that. Otherwise, I could have picked FIFA as the GOAT RPG. But no, it's about <laughs> RPG games. We do role players a football manager or player. So, you know, you know, so. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> FIFA career mode is an RPG. Every game's an RPG if you think in of it like that. FIFA yeah. career mode, in the newest FIFA player career mode, when you pick a player, you, you can spend your wages on stuff. Like what? Can you? Like you can buy a TV. You can <laughs> why? I don't know you why. You can buy a super injunction for that fucking teenager that you had sex <laughs> with. I'm not out. <laughs> you can do it. But anyway, this, this episode is about RPG games. And I was thinking, you know what? Yeah, I like them too. Fable is a great RPG that I used to play as a kid. And Skyrim, they're probably some of my faves. Like, I love Skyrim, and I've only ever played around 30% of it. But I still love it. And Bethesda have a new game dropping. You may have heard of it. It's called Starfield. Um, And I probably would have picked that had that been out, because I'm obsessed with it at the moment. I, I have never been so excited to play a game. Like, ever, I don't think. It looks fucking sick. But... Then I had to get thinking of a pick, and childhood memories filled me, just how my uncle used to. Used to. Um, <laughs> God's please, sake. Please bleep that. That was kid fucking raping. That was, just, that was intentionally in there to get bleep for the bleep comedy in the edit, okay? So you know what to do, Seb. It's going to um, be cold open. Yeah, that's no the cold open. No, bleep. Bleep. no, 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 no. <laughs> you coming no. out. No, bleep it. <laughs> I <a> troubled backstory. No. <laughs> right. But no, seriously, I did then realise that there was an RPG that particularly resonates with me and is also in contention for the GOAT. And that game is... <clears throat> I wanna be... The very best. Uh, no one ever was. Bum, bum, Catch them is my real test. Da, 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 is my da, 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 da. <laughs> I do <will> travel across <laughs> the <laughs> I'm not doing the whole thing. You should have the book Broken mom to understand. There we go. <laughs> that's, that's right, it's Pokemon! Gotta get gotta you! Get you. It's you and me! <laughs> I know it's our destiny! So yeah, that's right. Fucking Pokemon, right? How'd you get a Pikachu on a bus? You Pokemon. It's Pokemon. We're doing Pokemon. Now, the media and the fucking Peter scumbags might have you believe that Pokemon is a devil worship animal abuse simulator. But in actual fact, it is... And I, this is a fact. The single highest grossing media franchise of all time beats the likes of Star Wars, Batman, Harry Potter, and Marvel. In fact, beats every single media franchise you can think of because it's the highest grossing, which I thought was pretty impressive. I, I didn't know that. Um, 
And it all started really in 1996, when the first Pokemon games were released in Japan. Red and green, and then blue was released later on. And these games laid the blueprint and the rules for all of the later games to follow. So they all pretty much have exactly the same blueprint um, of the RPG mechanics. In Pokemon, you role play as a starting out Pokemon trainer. You're given your first Pokemon by a shady looking professor. And you're only 10. And he's like, here you go, kid. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> no <I'm> joking. <laughs> um, you get given your first Pokemon, and then you get sent off on your way to complete your adventure. And the main goal of every single Pokemon game is the same: number one, defeat all gym leaders; number two, beat the Elite Four and become the Pokemon champion; and number three, which is technically the post-game in all the games, you gotta catch them all, baby. <laughs> And what makes Pokemon a great RPG is that you might not have as much freedom as Morrowind, but you do have a lot of freedom. In the Pokemon world, you can create a team of Pokemon however you want. Some are objectively better than others. You can type match and go for good stats and just have the objective best team regardless of what they look like and look their fucking coolness and shit. You can secretly train their EV and IV stats, which I am not even going to pretend to be autistic enough to understand because it's like mind blowing. Mm. Um, or you can just fill it with your favorite fucking coolest little Pokemon, right? Mm. And that is the biggest and funnest aspect of role playing in a Pokemon game. You can be any trainer that you like. The story is always somewhat linear, like you have to go from this town to this town and then you have to do this task. But at points it does open up and branch off so that you do get some freedom as well to go and battle this gym before this one. And ultimately, the freedom of the game is catching whatever Pokemon you want to catch and train them up onto your team however you want. And the world's always like vibrant and there's like little side missions and you can talk to every single NPC and some will tell you little bits of information or trade you items or tell you to go and fucking, I don't know, ride this bike around, I'll give you a free bike and shit. I can't even remember what half the side goes. But before Vinny goes on a fat rant and starts shouting at me, and he's just like, man, you, you can't pick Pokemon, mate. you got to actually pick, like, one of them and that. Like, you can't just say Pokemon, mate. Like, you can't say COD. you got to pick one. That's actually your one, mate. Yeah, like, the fine. single game is not franchises. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly, mate. We're doing single games and that, mate. So, fine. <laughs> Fucking hell. Lay off me, all right? <laughs> I, have. <laughs> I mentioned it once, like three oh, weeks man, ago. I mentioned it like three weeks ago. Yeah, <laughs> I have actually decided which game is the best of the bunch. Mm. Most Pokemon games follow the blueprint that I sent at, set out, but the best ones, by far, in my opinion, are. The remakes of the original sequels of the original games. So the it's the it's the remake of the original okay. sequel to the original game. Wait, what colours are you talking about there? Which ones? So these the games I picked are Heart Gold and Soul Silver. <laughs> yep, hard agree. Agree. Yeah, also hard agree. Objectively the best Pokemon games out there. These are remakes of the original Silver and Gold games from 2000 and were released in 2009 on the DS as part of the fourth generation of Pokemon. Now, in my opinion, they probably should have fucking stopped there because we're now on like 10 and it's objectively like worse. <laughs> there is like <laughs> an animate bag of rubbish and key rings and swords now. Uh, really? I, no, hang on, hang on. Hang on. There's always been shit Pokemon, even in Gen 1. Yeah. Let's just get over it. What the fuck is Muck, Muck in Grimer? It's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. a bit of Grime, but it has an eye. What's a poison type? What, what is a poison type? Yeah. Coughing's a good yeah. poison type. That's a cool poison type. Like yeah. Ekans. You know, it just Denim. makes backwards. <laughs> and also, what's Muck backwards? 
No! Um, not again! <laughs> and what is he? <laughs> Apart from <laughs> <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> yeah, this, is, this has gone downhill. <laughs> Translated from Japanese, aren't they? So the original meaning wouldn't have been come. That's a, cool, well, that's I, a coincidence. I, I think they have like a team of, like in America or whatever who come out with the English names because oh, they're all. Right. Still makes yeah, it like Charmander that... and true, yeah, true. Squirtle. Licky tongue, <laughs> yeah. Blah. I said sorry, Pokemon. <laughs> well, because <laughs> he's a fucking pervert. So <laughs> you didn't have to explain that. <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> uh, you were mean to me earlier. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I never called you a pervert. I think I might have called you a pedo. A, pe a fucking pedophile, yeah. <laughs> That's way worse. Ah, <laughs> sometimes maybe oh. good, sometimes maybe shit. Now. I've lost where I am. All right. <laughs> now. <laughs> it does that. The, the sentence actually stop now. Now. Why are these, in particular, the best Pokemon games? Well, it takes the rules that have been set out in the Pokemon world, and it does them ten times better. Now, both the original and the remakes did most of this stuff, but the reason why the remakes are so much better is because it added on so much more content on top of the already added on content that the original Silver and Gold did compared to the general blueprint. Mm. Once you beat the Elite Four and get to the post-game, that is really where the game actually kind of starts. Like, the main game and the post-game, the post-game is probably way larger than the main game of getting eight gym badges and beating the Elite Four. And you, what you do, you travel back to the red and blue region so you get two split regions, which is the first time, like, you can't do that in any other Pokemon game. You normally stay in the same region, get the eight badges, and be the Elite Four. Now you can go to two. So you can go back to the original red and blue and battle all those eight gym leaders that you know and love as well. So you can get fucking 16 gym badges, not just eight. Literally doubling the amount of gym badges that you can get. You can fight Brock and Misty and all the guys that you know and love. And... And blue. Every... Huh? And blue, he's the eighth. He's the fi he's the final sixteenth gym, Gary, first, yeah. which is really cool. Yeah. yeah, fighting blue again. And then the other thing is, everyone is at a higher level as well, and this is important because in normal Pokemon games, you kind of hit a level ceiling of people that you battle when you beat the Elite Four, like around fifty, sixty ish. And so, at that point, even though you can train your Pokemon to level hundred, you can only ever battle those guys. But with Heart Gold and Soul Silver, because the game opens up further beyond the Elite Four, you can hit a higher level ceiling through that, which is pretty cool. And it makes use of the fact that you can get to level 100, because really, in Pokemon, you should be able to get to like 70 max, because you don't really need anyone higher than that to beat everyone in the game. But in Soul Silver and Heart Gold, you can, you do need people higher than that. And that is because after you beat all 16 gym badges, you then get to fight the fucking rude boy of Pokemon, the hardest Pokemon trainer ever inputted into a game, Red, or as he's known as fucking, it's Ash. It's just, it's just Ash from like the anime, and he's the final boss of Pokemon. I think that's canon canonically true, actually. Um, uh, I've got a lot to say about that. Um... <laughs> when you said that, vi both Vinny and Josh made the same face without like meaning to. They both went. Just a look of disgust, honestly. I know, I know. It's, not, it's not Ash. It's not Ash. Yeah. Ash is based off of Reds, not the other way around. Yeah. I know that, but the anime's been out for a shit ton of time at this point, and they, they gave him a level 88 Pikachu, right? As his. Best Pokemon. Yeah. Oh, who do I know in Pokemon who's got a really powerful Pikachu? Who looks, he's got a fucking red hat and red jacket and shit, and also a Charizard and. Red. Red. Fuck off. Red. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you get to fight Ash, and he's got a Pikachu at level 88. 
So the level ceiling has been smashed into the stratosphere. You gotta train them little motherfuckers hard. You gotta get fucking pound their ass in the gym. Like they gotta be beefy and strong. Not for fuck's sake. <laughs> You're saying it. You're the one saying it. You want like pound their ass, man. Stop pounding oh, ass. I, I mean, like let them to lift their weight in that. Um... <laughs> <laughs> oh lord give them the rocky montage Scary yeah. me yeah just ed just cut it up so i don't sound like a sexual predator <laughs> now. I'm, you, i don't know how to do that <laughs> that's not beeping just beep shit I... that's gonna make it sound worse because people are gonna wonder what you said well they can wonder it's better than knowing <laughs> now i don't know if it is <laughs> Into the gym and boop their ass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll do that again then so you can just chop it out. Get them into the gym, like lift bare weight in that. All right, there you go. So. <laughs> That's not happening. <laughs> That's not happening. <laughs> I, you you fell on your pedo sword. What? They're Pokemon. <laughs> That's bestiality, so. Listen, <laughs> Your Honor, actually, <laughs> not Peter Pillia. <laughs> oh, hey, God, I can't save. <laughs> right. Can I say you've gone over time here as well? I no, I haven't. You have. We've been sidetracking loads. I bet you have not stopped it. I've read two and a half paragraphs. You read two and a half paragraphs in ten minutes. He does big paragraphs. <laughs> <laughs> Because we've been sidetracked, I bet you've not been stopping it properly. Anyway, I'm nearly done. So listen. You... <laughs> you know, this just is three and a half paragraphs. <laughs> the thing. Well, this one can't get done because she's fucking taking the piss. So listen, right. Okay, okay. You also get to go and catch a ton of legendary Pokemon from all all generations of the game which is totally unique to this one you get to catch legendaries not just from generation two where these are set three i think even four like go back and get all the ones all of them from two it's unique and it's wicked mm. you also get to have your pokemon compete at the pokemon olympic games which I is a really that. yeah it's a really fun role playing game allowing you to do something else other than battle with your favorite little kids. did i imagine this or is there a thing where it's done based on the time like there's something to do with like cuz i don't i have i mean i could be wrong but i have the bug catching contest i have bug catching contest done on the yeah, day there is like Tuesdays a Tuesdays the i Wednesdays. have emerald and every time i start it up on my um Yes, it says something about how it'll be like, oh, your clock has run out of battery, yeah. so oh, some yeah, features the, the won't happen. Yeah, because yeah. the consciousness have internal clocks, and there were clock-based activities. Like, in that one, like, on a Monday, you would be able to, like, see a certain person who would give you an item or some shit. Okay, you know, right. that's what happened. And there's, there's, there's day and night cycles where you can only catch certain Pokemon in mm. day and night. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, the uh, it gives you something else to do with your little guys other than battle um there's also a photographer who roams around the world and takes photos of your team at various parts along your journey so you can see how your pokemon have evolved and how your little team has changed along the way keeping like a record mm. of your journey which i i think that all of this is like great world building for like you actually as a trainer rather than just you going around beat the you know just fighting trainers and the absolute best role-playing mechanic in this game and is unique among all pokemon games and is the best feature ever 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 implemented in a pokemon game is the fact that every single pokemon that you can catch you can, fuck. can fucking walk around behind you yes mm -hmm. is mm, like amazing it is the single yeah. greatest thing pokemon have ever done everyone who's watching anime is like oh look ash's little like pikachu walks him around blah, blah, blah. and in yellow pikachu can follow you around but no yeah, one else yeah. but in this game anyone who you put at the top of your team gets out of their little pokeball and fucking follows you about a little sprite of them moving and they scale in size as well so if they're like a little fucking weedle they're tiny if you catch a giant like fucking well, Lugia, a dragon yeah it's like enormous it can't even fit in the buildings it has to go back in this little ball because it's so big hang on so if you and... catch like a gyarados it's just like fucking bashing around behind you no it's yeah. not like actual actual size yeah, like, it's it not would be too scaled, but it's like scaled like you know a little one's gonna be small and then like a big one's gonna be big and like, like, a gyarados takes up four tiles rather than one basically okay yeah. right 
Just Google some pictures. There, are, it is amazing. It's the sickest thing in a Pokemon game ever. Like you get, you catch someone, you're like, oh, I wonder what it looks like behind me. It's the first thing you do. You put it behind you, like, oh, cool. That's so cool. <laughs> you can fucking talk to them. You just turn around, like, say, like, what's up, and they're like, yo, and that, that, that's it, and it's cool. But it just it adds to that role playing experience of Pokemon that I think it makes it feel real and lived in the fact that you've caught your favorite one and you can see them behind you just like chilling and cutting about with you. And so Pokemon as a franchise is an amazing RPG. It's got tons of replay value, getting different pokies along the way and building different teams. And in Soul Silver and Heart Gold, it does it in the best way possible. It allows you to do so many more things than any other Pokemon game. And it gives you the most content probably of any game as well. And is easily the best entry into that RPG franchise. So for me, it's the go. It will always be the best Pokemon game ever made. Nice. Interesting. I yeah, I knew you were picking Pokemon. I didn't know which Pokemon you were picking. Um, I'm aware that Soul Silver and Heart Gold are widely considered to be the, the best Pokemon of the series. Oh, they are. Yeah, I'm yeah, pretty sure when you Google it, it's always like... Because when I first got a DS, I was Googling like what games to get, and everyone oh. would be like, Soul Silver, Heart Gold. So I, I forgot think... to mention another role-playing mechanic, actually, that I've just remembered. It's you too could late. Take your po- you could take your Pokemon out of the game and put them in the fucking real life, mate. Oh, my God, yeah, the... the... <laughs> what was that again? The little <laughs> Pokemon. Pokemon. It's, like the, it's like the Tamagotchi, but for Pokemon. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah! I remember no, that. It was a count now. So you take them out of the game, put them in your step counter, and you can put it on your belt and walk fucking steps of them, and it'll it actually them happy. They get fucking buzzing. Yeah, it'll level them up as well. And yeah, you yeah, just get yeah. one XP for every like step you made. It's insane. That's yeah. insane. Yeah. That's, That's really cool. Fucking yeah, I need to level this fucker up. Vinny <laughs> 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 just attached it to his right <laughs> wrist at night. Yeah. And then, uh... <laughs> 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 oh. <laughs> I forgot that like, you can literally <laughs> take your Pokemon from the virtual world and put them in real life. <laughs> um, so that is no look, I, I, I like it. it. I like it. I have to say, I've played a bit of Pokemon. It didn't grab me kind of how I wanted it to, but I think it's that thing of like, I got, I found, I got a DS cheap, um, and then I was like, oh, I should get some games for it. So I got Emerald for the Game Boy, and I played it, and it was like, I don't think it hit me in the feels like it probably would had I played it when I was a kid. But I was kind of just yeah. a bit like, eh. It's all right, mm. but like, you know, yeah. the Witcher it's three on the Switch was better, yeah. but that's because you, it's like more now. Yeah, Pokemon's one of those things where when you played it back in the day, like me and Vinny, we'd just fucking sit and play Pokemon all day. Sometimes just mm. not even talk to each other. We'd just be playing separate games, just sat and fucking playing. Like occasionally, be like, oh, you caught what? Oh, I see. Like, yeah, I, I used to remember coming into the playground of like my Game Boy Color and just like everyone like getting their Game Boys out and just like comparing and trading pokemon it was like so social yeah. and, like everyone was just like the yeah. fucking link cables. Into, yeah, oh, yeah. this cable link... are fucking shit they were <laughs> you, sick you, you, touched, you, would... you prodded them and they would it would like the connection would break they were so dodgy they, but... they wouldn't be in your one or in their one they're like lost into like <laughs> they're <laughs> gone forever yeah oh god <laughs> If you were chasing them you would see a picture of like a little ball like <clears throat> traveling along the cable and i was like yo that's mad because yeah. it actually is. <laughs> like when, I always thought that was great. Though. I wonder how DS many. Is... I wonder how many Sorry. Pokemon have been lost in the Linkyverse, and like Come if on. you could get into it. Trillions. How many? Trillions. 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 Yeah. Trillions. Quadrillions. Squintillions. <laughs> oh god! Right. Anyway, you're not that far. <laughs> oh, yeah, Michael, don't don't take that first. Um, Vinny, what yeah, were you sure. saying? <laughs> um, I was just I was just gonna say that. Um. It's just like a wonder when, like, Bluetooth, you know, on DSs yeah. came about, and you didn't have to fuck around with cables because, like, yeah. it was so much easier with the Bluetooth. Because you could just battle, like, wirelessly, which was. Yeah, awesome. it was really easy to, like, do, like, that shit. Oh, and also in Heart Gone Soul Silver, because it was in a DS, you could plug in your GBA cartridge into the bottom and just migrate your Pokemon from your own yeah. game to your own yeah. game. Mm. Which is a game changer because otherwise, if you owned two copies of a Pokemon game, say you owned Red and Blue, Unless you have two Game Boys and a Link Cable, you can't trade between them. It's a fucking pain in the ass. But with Heart Gold and Soul Silver, you just plugged it into the same console and just, just yeah, connected yeah. it, and that was it. Done. Like, it was sick. Do you mind if I BRB just really quickly to fill this up a little bit? Oh, for God's sake. All right, then. It's a fucking I'll beamer, be 30 mate. seconds. Thank you. So middle class. Oh, well, if he's doing that, I'm getting water. I'll be back. Oh, in fucking oh. hell. 
And he's so middle class, isn't he? Oh, I what'd know. you do in France? Oh, I drank red wine and ate baguettes all day. Mm. Oh, and I got COVID amazing. on the ferry. They're probably none of them are vaccinated because they're all middle class. I bet, yeah, I bet none of them are vaccinated. Yeah. They're all like, well, I'm not having nanobots from Bill Gates in my brain, my brain, you know. <laughs> Whereas us fucking working class heroes, we got to take the vaccine because oh. we got we got to keep the streets clean and the fucking. Mate, we got fucking jobs to do, mate. If we all get it, we go back to work, mate. That's what Bonnie said, mate. Oh no! Oh, it's fucking massive. It's got a whole bottle. What? We were just discussing how middle class you are, bro. If you had this, mate, this is fucking delicious. It's so oh, fucking bro, 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 When we said, Finny, what did you do on your family holiday to France for a week? I just drank red wine and ate baguettes. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you do when you're in France. You drink red wine and eat baguette. Like baguettes aren't middle class. What the fuck are you talking about? Baguettes Michael can't regular. even spell baguette, let alone eat it. Yeah, it's it's French. French. Not spell baguette. Seb, have you ever been on holiday to France with Mama and Papa and ate red wi- drank red wine and ate baguettes? You know I haven't. Exactly, and neither have I. So Vinny, fuck off, can. <laughs> but that's because neither of us have a complete family. That's because we're not working class, are you? <laughs> What right. can I say? I love it, French. Je <laughs> <laughs> love you. Je love you. I don't know. This is actually really lovely. I, <laughs> I only got a second glass I, just because it's so tasty. I need to have more. Oh, like, I don't have a problem. <laughs> I like Michael was like right why like Seb me and you have never been on holiday with our mum and dad to France right my mum and dad (laughs) broke up when I was four and in order for Michael to go on holiday with his mum and dad they'd have to invent necromancy (laughs) it's not happening oh lord (laughs) (laughs) he was laughing too much what was that what did they have to invent necromancy (laughs) Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 sorry, that's good. that's truly harsh. Anyway, um, okay, so that was amazing. So, oh. right, Mike, <laughs> right, give my fucking question so I can just discuss by myself. <laughs> right, here's your questions on Pokemon. I'm gonna play the um the song from what's the tune from um. Mastermind, do, do, do. no, dun, 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 dun. Yeah. so <laughs> turn into Jaws there, Jaws the shark, yeah. right? Um, <laughs> Michael, question number one of your Pokemon yeah. questions. Remember, if you can't get a single question right, you are disqualified. First question I don't know if this is easy or hard. Hopip is a dual type Pokemon of grass, and what other type? <sighs> Water? Ooh. I know. No. No. Normal? No. No. Vinny? Fairy. No. No. No, it's not fairy. It's flying. Oh, yeah. for fuck's sake, mm. yeah. Right. Question number two. You can't fly. That's so annoying. Question number two. <laughs> Blastoise is what generation of Pokemon? One. <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was really easy. Is that really easy? Is that e- I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Team Aqua. Third. Yeah, you're not disqualified. Third. Third question. Team Aqua is found in which region? Oh. So the third gen Hoenn. Oh, it is yeah. Hoenn. Yeah. yeah. Nice. That's easy. Team Magma as well. Team Aqua. I, I Team Magma. Gen three, but I couldn't remember what the name of the place was. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, well, I nearly said Sinnoh, but that's five, yeah. Four. So, much four. like much four, like Vinny... Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, five is Unova, isn't it? Yeah. Unova, yeah. That was like oh, America, right. I think. Right, I'm tapping yeah. out yeah. with no more nerds. Right. <laughs> fucking hell. Right, um, well, Michael, you got the same as Vinny, so... Oh, fucking hell, that must be bear clever on that, then. <laughs> so, um... I'm now looking at Josh's questions and suspecting they might be the hardest. Oh One of them's God. definitely a bit That's silly, good. but anyway. I can't wait for him to blow it out of the park and then just not get any of them right. So yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, that presentation is easily the winner, but 
We did get zero, so uh, <laughs> Pokemon <laughs> wins. <laughs> um, so yeah, with that, without further ado, um, Josh, I guess it's over to you to hear what you think is the greatest role-playing video game. Josh, who works in the genre of video games or worked or did something to do with video games at some point. I can't remember how we tangentially got him into this situation, but um, what was it? I've, I've dabbled with game development. Um, yeah, that's never the done one. It, never done it professionally per se, but dabbled. That's how we did it, I remember. Um, yeah, so Josh, who has thought about video games sometimes... <laughs> Josh, who has played at least one video game yeah. in his life. Josh, who's played a video game and runs the most overcomplicated Discord server I've ever seen in my life. What is your yep. greatest I'm still RPG? Not in. <laughs> oh my word, we're all in it now. Apart from yeah, apart from Mork, this is oh it's okay. It would, it would overwhelm me. I it, it just... also Mork. They don't take pedos. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's like rule three, I think, yeah. I like how it's not <laughs> rule three. What's one and two? <laughs> don't be a dick. <laughs> be nice, yeah. Be be nice, no be a yeah. dick. No pedos, please. <laughs> <laughs> it's your only three rules. Oh. Falling at the final hurdle if again. I could stop being a dick. You thought I was going to say the other one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> i'm doing my thing i'm doing my bit yeah go yeah. go josh all right so i personally think this is the go rpg and we've had Wrong. uh pokemon probably one of the most recognizable franchises of all time and we've had the elder scrolls pretty uh, recognizable now i'm going for something a little bit more niche that maybe people haven't heard of but in my opinion it's one of the best rpgs ever nay it is the greatest rpg of all time nay. i'm going for divinity nay, original sin 2 Released in 2017 on the PC, Xbox One, <clears throat> PlayStation 4, the lot, basically. I'm but we're mainly up. talking about PC here. Developed by Larian Studios. It's the sixth entry in the Divinity game series. However, uh, Original Sin 1, which is the game before this, was the first one that actually started to get mainstream attention. It's a top-down, uh, turn-based tactical RPG, which is described as bringing the tabletop experience, so aka Dungeons & Dragons, uh, to the uh, the computer screen in a faithful but ultimately streamlined way. So, what is this game about? Well, the game is set in the fantasy world of Rivalon, centuries after the events of the first game, but that doesn't really matter. Um, certain living be beings that exist in this world um, have a form of energy known as the Source. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> those individuals are called sorcerers, but it's spelled <laughs> like source or res. Nice, um, very close. Cool. Nice. Like you got those sows. Yeah, yeah they, 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 like, they are Fuck drenched well. in the source, um, and they can use this uh, strange power to cast um, special, special kind of spells <laughs> and magic. Um, and basically, the gods have given up a section of their power uh, to infuse this. Uh, this source power into a single being called the divine and the divine is basically jesus it's like the the one person on the planet that's like blessed by the gods to lead everyone to safety mm. and as a result of this all this source stuff going on monstrous creatures from the void known as the void woken uh guided by the evil god king um have begun to invade through uh cracks in reality created by the use of source so uh and there's an order of uh, called the Divine Order, actually, uh, which is all about persecuting these sorcerers. Anyway, so what makes this game good? Well, absolutely loads of classes, loads of unique abilities. The ability to multi-class, you can be whatever you want. You can mix and match. It's great. Uh, you can choose from six fully voiced companions. Each of them have their own fleshed out storyline, motives and quests. They can all die, be betrayed. You can have sex with all of them. Uh, one of them oh, is sick. one of them's a lizard, and one of them is an actual skeleton. Oh. You can still have sex with them. You can have sex with a skeleton. <laughs> yeah, you can have sex with a skeleton. It's great. You mean there's no penetration because there can't be, but there's other stuff that goes on apparently. Is there like oh. a cutscene where you get to see it, or is it just like? No, no, it's, it's, vividly, yeah. it's vividly described with voice acting, but there is no cutscene. Anyway. How vivid? More vividly. <laughs> um, I love the bony feel of your skull. Oh yeah. God, you're Michael, you're Jesus! Not far off. You're not far uh. off. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, so interestingly, uh, the game uh, features an elemental surface system. And basically what this means is that all the elements kind of interact with each other. So let's say you split open a barrel of water, it leaks water all over the floor. You can shoot electricity at that water and it electrifies the water, throwing everyone in it. Or you can put out That's fires beautiful. with water and it turns into steam, which then blocks vision. You mm. can uh, get poison all over mm -hmm. it and like turn the water into goo, but then set that goo on fire. It, it's there's so much going on there. It's the great. environmental hazards are really fun to play around with. They all yeah. like combine in really cool ways. It's really good, and then it's just it just makes like mages that have all the elements at their disposal. It's like really interesting because like first you might throw out like some oil and then throw fire at it, but then throw water at it to create a smoke cloud afterwards. It's it's great. Very that tactical. sounds quite cool actually. It, it is, is cool. Very cool. You can interact with everything in the world. It's all permanent. You can pick up a fork and put it down and it will stay there forever. Every single person can be killed. It is all permanent. It is everything. Everyone you talk to, they remember who you are and what you said to them. Um, it is The world is very, very, feels very kind of like real and tangible. Um, the game's got a lot of dark themes. I mean, the whole point of the game is the person you play as is something called Godwoken, which is like a basically meant to be the next divine and you're being hunted down by the divine order and there's a lot of slavery and kind of persecute religious persecution and a lot of genocide um to deal with these sorcerers which are basically considered as like subhuman wow that it's actually the opposite they're almost too powerful so society wants to kill them all mm. Mm. seb that's uh, right up your street with the whole nazi thing <laughs> <laughs> for fuck's sake <laughs> Thing you're always into. I'm always not. There's. I've about. never said anything about the Nazis. Okay, <laughs> that is objectively okay, not okay, true. <laughs> that's not true. But I've never said anything positive about the. Okay, I've never said anything positive about the Nazis that wasn't a joke. <laughs> oh my god! You liked uh, Hitler's eyes. <laughs> You said they were, they were beautiful. Yeah, you said. <laughs> you, said his, you said his lips were kissable, and you and you wouldn't mind the bristles of his mustache. You said he was breedable and submissive. Yeah. Okay. You said you love him, and you were babies. <laughs> you said Hitler's only got him before, and you've got the other one in your ass. Oh. That's oh, <laughs> weird. You can cut all this stuff. Don't worry, it's fine, mate. Nah, I'll, that's the cold open. Let's face it. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, right, right, I'm moving on. I'm moving on. Um, Thank you. So yeah, the, a good thing about it, uh, yeah. So that's the dark themes, but it's also tied in with a lot of whimsical humour, uh, a lot of funny characters, and uh, as I'll get into later, a lot of uh, interesting comical interactions when you do things in a certain way. But the most important thing about this game, which in my opinion sets it arrest from every other RPG out there, is the game wants you to think outside the box, and it wants you to break it, like break tr traditional game conventions. This is a real like Dungeons and Dragons session and Dungeons and Dragons is all about thinking outside the box and doing something unique to solve the situation. And uh, I'm just going to basically now just go through some examples of some of the ridiculously fun, cool, crazy stuff you can do in this game. Uh, Cause I think that's honestly the best way to sell this. So just starting off first with almost like the tutorial area, the first place you'll put in is called Fort Joy, which is effectively a concentration camp or a labor camp for the sorcerers. Uh, and you have been put in there yourself as obviously one of the one of the the, the source users, uh, and you basically need to get out of there. There's loads of ways you can do this. You can literally walk up to the front gate, beat up the guards, and then fight an entire garrison of guards and get out. Although you'll probably die because you're level one, but it's there. <laughs> it's an option. You can get you can do something. You can break one of the rules in the island and get imprisoned, and then escape through the, the caves below the prison. You can end the life of an immortal knight who's been living on the island, and he will then in return help you escape because all he wants to do is die, and he can't. Uh, you can find some gloves that were swallowed by a crocodile, which allows you to teleport, and you can like teleport to where you need Ooh. to get to. Uh, you can win fights in the local arena run by the local thugs and earn enough favor with the inhabitants to get special treatment from the guards and use fucking that. Fucking Thunderdome, out. yes. It literally is the Thunderdome, yeah. Yeah, also, fucking sick. Uh, and most importantly is you can make friends and enemies inside of the fort, uh, and all your decisions are permanent, affect you for the rest of the game, and this is where you choose what companions you take with you, and the others will either die, hate you, or love you. Uh, so every single time you play, depending on your actions that happen in the starting area, it basically just like outlines the whole rest of the game for you. So it's never the same twice, which is really cool. Uh, and moving onwards then to just some quirky examples of fun stuff. There's a perk in the game, which lets you speak to animals. 
which basically then makes every single animal, I mean every single animal, have full, fully voiced dialogue. Like you would only what? get this, you only get mm. this if you take this one bizarre perk, which on paper feels like it's useless because it lets you talk to animals. But there's loads of quests that are involved with this, like one where you have to, there's two dogs that are in love, but one's like a, a guard dog and one's like a farm dog, and you have to like find their differences and get them together. A, uh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Honestly, it's insane. There's a, there's a quest where a chicken's lost her, her egg, uh, and you go find the egg, but it turns out the egg got infested by a demon, and then it hatches and kills the mother, and you've got to then kill the demon chicken. It's crazy. Um, there's also a crab that thinks it is the second incarnate of God, basically, and you have to either just, you can either just step on it or believe it. <laughs> what? Um, Imagine that, he's like, it's religious, like, oh yeah, I've got... <laughs> yeah, I know, it's crazy, yeah. Uh, there's a quest where there's uh, trolls that guard bridges, however, there's two of them, and they keep undercutting each other's prices, and one of them wants to uh, corner the market and open up in a monopoly, which is like this really intense business-esque like government like corporate takeover but it's like oh. paying the troll toll at a bridge so you got to pay funny. the troll toll yeah, you gotta pay the troll toll um also really another good thing hole. you can do if you're, if you're struggling <laughs> struggling with a tough boss <laughs> uh a tried and tested strategy is before you actually get them to notice you just stack up loads of barrels and props and stuff all near them and then just throw a fireball at them and blow them all up instantly killing the boss but you kind of made it yourself by grabbing loads of easy cans of dynamite and dragging them over easy, there. Man. There's a there's a quest where if you go into a pub you get approached by a uh, by a prostitute and um, you might be like oh hello and then it goes <laughs> to, uh, you can get taken upstairs and if you get if you get a little saucy and you fall for the flirtation then you basically effectively get robbed for everything you have and wake up like naked in your underwear. Uh, however, there's loads, ways, there's loads of ways this quest can end. If you discover the prostitute's like stash of stolen supplies before this, you can confront her and take it to the police. Or what well, my favorite thing about it in this game, I think, is just like this is just brilliant. If you're too, if you're based on your character stats and perks, if you're too good in bed with the prostitute, she decides not to rob you and tells you actually it was all worth it and lets you go with all your stuff. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> so Sweet, good. such a top shagger. I was gonna rob you, but. Nah. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I know, right? That's so um, good. There's a there's a cave run by a mad skeleton that basically he's gone completely insane, but he's also like one of the most powerful wizards ever. So he basically flips all the game mechanics on their head and uses like invisible walls and stuff like this and like cloning and all the stuff that the game's taught you like shouldn't happen. He uses it all against you. He's a right asshole. And then when you get to the end, it turns out he was a slave and he was forced to do it all. And it's very sad, but whatever. We kill him anyway because he's a dick. Um, Fucking meow. Sorry to chop his head off. Uh, also, you can get a spell which lets you speak to the dead, uh, and it lets you. There's a quest where you have to uh, solve a murder of a merchant, and uh, basically the victim, who you think is the victim, tells you a massive sob story. But if you actually speak to the ghost of the murdered merchant, if you took this perk, then you can actually get the true story, and he tells you where to dig up his body, and then you find clues and you can solve the murder. It's pretty good. Um, and I could, this list goes on, but I think I'm running out of time. So I just, it's pretty, it's pretty good. All right. Uh, mm. This game has absolutely loads of endings and I'm not going to spoil the ending for you, like the main part of the ending, but there is some really tough decisions you have to make. And it really kind of flips everything you've known about the whole game right on its head, right at the end. Uh, and yeah, it's pretty like devastating. Uh, but in conclusion, the game's good. The game is good. And that is it. Well Sweet. done. You only over cool. by thirty seconds, um, so I won't disqualify you this time. Um, well, you've got to do your questions first. Um, oh, but initial thoughts, very interesting. I I knew I was somewhat sold on it when you started talking about it because about halfway through, I googled to see if it was available on Nintendo Switch, which it is. But it's also forty pounds, forty four pence, which is. Bit much. I have it is no very, idea very how this game would work on a Switch. Like, it's got like all like the complicated PC UI menus shit. How would that? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I could see it working quite easily on a Switch. Switch, like, Switch you does get, like, have Oblivion and Skyrim to work on a Switch. Yeah, I suppose. Also, it does have to, it does have touch, so you can do touch controls. True. On Switch. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, that makes more sense. Um, but anyway, on mobile. What? Mobile. <laughs> I haven't played mobile games, so... <laughs> you play <laughs> Divinity Original Sin 2 on your Nokia now. Text. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's Zork. Zork's great, mate. Someone should have done Zork, but no one did. Um, Zork? Yeah. It's because I didn't grow up in the fucking 1970s. Like, 
<laughs> I've done played Zort. It's very clever. The way it's done. <laughs> it's Zork. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's, one brother it's, or it's like Zork is like the original text-based RPG that like came from D and D. It was like the oh, original I computer see. game. Oh, you like RPG. type in like go to the window. Go west. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's like you can't go any further. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah. right. I thought it was just like my brother or something that I'd never heard of, but. <laughs> Your alter ego. I guess not. I was, I'm disappointed. I've always wanted a cool brother. I'm your brother, homie. Yeah, right. And also, you have a, you actually have a brother. You have a younger have brother. <laughs> yeah, what? I oh, said, guys, no, savage. <laughs> anyway, right. We must crack on because mm. Josh is yet to prove himself. It's all well and good saying Divinity Original Sin 2 sounds like a great game. But Josh, what is the minimum amount of RAM required in the system requirements in gigabytes needed to play the original Sin 2? <laughs> okay, surely you can kind of guess okay, it. Okay, okay, okay. It's going to be a single digit, and it's going to be like higher... Oh, but it works on the fucking Switch, though. So, is this for the, P... this is for the PC? This version, is for the right? PC, yeah. Oh, mi- and this is minimum, not recommended. This is minimum, yeah. Oh, it's going to be two or four. That. It's going to be two or four, I reckon. Mm. And I think I'm going to have to go with four. Oh mm. my god, he's got it right. Yes. It's uh, four. four. He's not Let's being. Go. He's he not being. Nonsense question right with a nonsense answer that nobody understands. <laughs> mate, we all understood, mate. Nobody understand. here understands. No, no. What is what is a RAM? I don't know. Her. I, I don't know. <laughs> the only RAM Michael I... knows is his cock, mate. Um, no, nope. doesn't matter. No, this new laptop has got 16 rams. 16 rams, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's an upgrade. I think you've currently got four eight or RAM. eight. You've got eight rams. So you've got a whole, you're Ooh, doubling yeah. your ramage. I think uh, I've only got eight rams. No, you'll have more than eight. You're Did Seb make more. your PC? You'll definitely. No, I made my PC. Oh, you might have eight rams then. Mate, I've got I've got more rounds. What is this? What is this? No, Seb, Seb knows Seb knows about his rams, whereas you don't. Um, why, 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 why are you placing this on me? Because you previously said you didn't know what you were doing. I uh, know there is sixteen gigs. My bad. Uh, okay. Should we have a ram off, mate? Um, oh, I bet I'm gonna out ram you, mate. <laughs> yeah, actually, I remember. I remember getting new ram for actually. I remember because I was on eight for ages. I've got. I've like, got. Fuck, I'll get an extra eight. Thirty-two gigs, baby. Uh, I've got 32 gigs, but mine's DDR5, so... Uh, ooh, yeah, ooh. Are you DDR4, Seb? Yeah, I'm DDR4, mate. Oh, I even I'm DDR5. Well, when did you... Oh, what, because you built a PC shit. in the last, like, I've year? Only two, I've only got two gigabytes of storage space left on my computer. <laughs> <laughs> How do you do the RAMs? <laughs> you go and type in download more RAM. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, right. Anyway, we need to get we need to get on um, we need to get on to question number two of <clears throat> Josh's Divinity, Divinity Original Sin quiz two quiz I should say. Um, have, you, have you played Divinity one by the way? So, uh, I, Josh, I play, I played it for like two hours and then didn't really like it and then played the second one like years later and loved it. So it, yeah. is it like a lot different from the second or is it just like it's an older? Basically, sword? it's a very similar game. It's just like a lot more dated. The number one is. Okay. Didn't have, Larry didn't really have the budget either, so it's a bit yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good, in my okay. Opinion. Right. Okay. Anyway, obviously we all know that Divinity: Original Sin two premiered in twenty seventeen, but what mm. month was the premiere? What? <laughs> that is a terrible question. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Josh, what fucking month was it? Fucked up by these. Uh, okay, right. Let's think about this uh, logically. So, when do people want to release video games? They even want to do September. it in summertime, or they want to do it in winter. Uh, yeah, I'm going to say it was November. Mork actually stole the answer for you. It was September. Fuck. <laughs> all big video games released in September. Um, yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Well, well always it, in September. your it's final fast. question you should get because you actually mentioned it in your spiel. Um, but so just... if, you get, if you can get it quicker than Vinny got his mega question, oh god, you fucking win. Des- so... <laughs> Despite being titled Original Sin Two, what numerical number is is the game in the division? 
Yeah, you did get it, but not anywhere near as quick as Vinny. Nowhere near as no. quick as Vinny, unfortunately. I forgot what you were asking. At. I was like, wait, what? Like, and then I was like, yeah, because yeah. But what's 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 really exciting and actually quite refreshing and quite humbling for me, I should say, is that you've all got two questions right, which means that you all brought forward something you genuinely give a shit about. I actually got really three right because I got one of Josh's right. <laughs> I mean, technically. Yeah. <laughs> so I actually. Fair enough. So you're actually the most autistic out of all of us then when it comes to video games by the sounds of it. Who knew? Mate, I fucking am, mate. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I played them all. I played, like, Angry Birds and, like, Candy Crush. <laughs> I, I... Hang on, so... <laughs> Be, be, a pe- as, as what's the what's the thing you always say, Seb? A peek behind, behind the curtain. curtain. Yeah, yeah. A, a peek behind the curtain. I actually was originally going to do Divinity: Original Sin two, until really? Josh said he wa- until Josh said he wanted to do it, and I said fair enough because he's got like six hundred, seven hundred hours on it. I've got twenty five. I'm glad uh... I, I changed it to something which I've got hundreds of hours into because mm-hmm. I wouldn't have got. I mean, I might have got the four gigabytes because I might have just guessed about four gigabytes of RAM. But other than that, I have no fucking clue. Um, I well, feel like my questions were not actually about the game, but about like <laughs> all the meta information around the game. Well, do you yeah. know what it was? It's like every other, both, um, both Morrowind and Pokemon had like massive trivia sites, and I just couldn't find one for Divinity: Original Sin two. Like I kept it's typing in, niche. I kept typing in Divinity: Original Sin two trivia quiz, and just nothing came up. So in the end, I just went onto the Wikipedia for it and just like got some stuff what the fuck just you, the boring questions <laughs> <laughs> you just read the specifications before the article started like this requires four gigabytes of ram it came yeah in september of 2017 yeah, yeah. yeah oh <laughs> you said you called something six i don't know what that question was <laughs> no despite being titled original sin 2 what numerical number is it in the divinity series it's the sixth divinity game but it is original sin 2 exactly oh, what well, they've made six of them now yep and they were all like ah. early 2000s like not good rpg games action right. RPG type things not good okay well cool, that yeah. just leaves someone who's very handsome and wearing a juventus shirt to Craig. come up with a Craig's not wearing a Juventus shirt. Um, he might be. You yeah, don't know. Be. Craig's not wearing. Also, you don't know his favorite football team because you're not his mate. Me and Vinny go to the pub with him every other week, mate. And every time we're there, we say, "Did you invite Seb?" And he says that he did invite you, and you called him a dickhead. Right. Here's the thing: Craig wouldn't get into your pub because he's brown. <laughs> <laughs> Um, look no i was talking about me i'm the handsome young man in the Juventus shirt and i've got the answer to all the questions and obviously the only really fair way to do it is to roll a d20 no i'm joking um oh. so <laughs> like you fucking better not. Yeah, I was gonna um, say, there's a lot to weigh up though. here. I feel like I am shooketh by how compelled I was by all of your arguments. I would say Michael's intrigued me the most, but also it's difficult because I've played Pokemon and didn't really enjoy it. Yeah, I can I just actually surrender? Because I don't think I can, I don't think I can live with myself if fucking Pokemon won. <laughs> but the, the trouble is, though, not that Pokemon's not good. Like I fucking love Pokemon, but like, let's be real. Like, you can't do half the shit these two fucking talking about. Let's be real. But the trouble is, As is like it an is RPG game, yeah. it is the and biggest. I will, you know, I will back my horse until it keels over and dies, but. On this occasion, I think I'm going to pull him out of the race. <laughs> just straight oh, out. I'm so, I, I, because I just know, uh, you know is what I mean? Is this a thing that's allowed in goats? Yeah, I mean, you can you can fall on your sword if you want. Um... I, mean, I know that you're not going to pick Pokemon, and I just think, focus your energy of deliberation on those two. They're definitely better shouts. Okay, well, do you know what? The first and only time ever you are ever going to hear me say I was wrong, so fucking revel in it, okay? (laughs) Well, do you know what, look? I have... I have, um... I've come up with... I've got a bit crazy with power here. Mm -hmm. And, um... As well as the questions, I'm actually going to do something a bit rogue here. And I'm going to ask Vinny 
and Josh to just give me one paragraph in there, just off the bonds, on why their opponent's game shouldn't win. Oh. Oh. I mean, Josh, you've got loads of ammo against me. I was gonna say, you're in trouble, mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. It's just one word fucking, like, dice roll combat system. Like, <laughs> all of that is just, I lose. Oh, I, can, I got a lot to choose from here. <laughs> okay, Josh, you go first, and I'm going to give Vinny some time to... It's perfect game to be the GOAT, as long as it's fun. If those things no, don't no. the fun, it's not be perfect. No, no, I know. They're both fun games. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. So, like, you know, it doesn't but... matter... If Something's not perfect in Morrowind, or it's buggy and shit. It's I know. Just I'm just. I'm just. I'm just. I'm just. You know. I'm just asking them to tear each other to pieces. Right. How they decide to do that could could be any way. You know. Maybe Fair maybe bang. Josh thinks he's going for the jugular by saying it's broken and shit, and I don't really care about that. But if he said it was mm. actually a bit boring, if he was like, the truth is, it's a bit boring. Mm. Maybe 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 he swings it. Anyway, Josh, you've got. I'm going to literally put a timer on for thirty seconds. You just 30. got just what? fire accusations, what? not just about the game, um, nothing else. Ab- uh, <laughs> not about right. me. Yeah, I'm gonna tear you apart, boy. <laughs> Fuck. You have to do it in rhyme. This is a rap battle. Though. Oh yeah, someone play a beat. Yeah, we've got to rap it though. Um, right, Vinny. Nice roll combat. You I'm won. sorry, Morrowind. Morrowind, I'm sorry for what I'm about to do. But Morrowind is not the goat because you swing your sword, your sword hits the enemy and it just has the audacity to say that you missed. And this will be the first four hours of anyone's playthrough because you don't have the skills to ever hit, but yet the sword still connects with their body perfectly. Very mm-hmm. bad. Um, yeah. The game is all sorts of broken. There's loads of like things and uh, like calculations and uh, mechanics yep. of the game that are just flat out broken so much so that in order to even play <laughs> the game saying, yeah. you, need a, you need a fan patch that's like been worked yeah. on for so long and fixes over 500,000 no, that's, that's a bit extreme a lot of bugs but in all honesty the biggest problem with Morrowind is I don't think it got the love it deserved it, the story was rushed towards the end and although like Vinny said it is one of the greatest it was very rushed and it never got finished and I believe the game could if it wasn't in development hell from lack of funding, could have been better. But it didn't get quite over the line. That was bang on a minute and was very, very good. I'm gonna say Vinny, you've got you can have a minute as well. Josh, you really okay. you really that's that if Vinny doesn't come back from that, that was a very good tear down because you didn't just go for the broken you the whole thing about maybe it could have been better. I didn't realise uh, I, I didn't realise that it. the end of the game was a bit shit. I didn't know that. And now I do. It's not a bit shit. I, 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 I think it's it's it's, it's not as great as the last the first like eighty percent of it like the, the last like five percent of it's like a little bit rushed. No, it falls off a bit, but like that fight with Dagothar, like come on, Dagothar is fantastic. The yeah, whole time he, he's he like talking carry. to you and that booming yeah. voice, and he's just like, "Come, of our friend or foe, come." And look upon the heart of Lorcan. You know that whole. Oh, I just I love all his voice lines. Right, it's fantastic. Vinny, you've got a minute. Tear apart Divinity Original Sin 2. Go. It looks complicated. I played 20 hours of it and I haven't played any more since. (laughs) 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 Also, I I don't really like turn-based fight. I don't really like turn-based combat. I've never been a big fan of it other than Pokemon. But I just like that because it was Pokemon, you know. Oh yeah, but, I actually hate turn-based combat as well. Like, I can't play Final Fantasy games that are like that. It just bores me to tears. But I can play Pokemon, but turn-based yeah, combat reason, like that bores me to tears. Okay, but... Yeah, I don't know why that is. It's so simple, yeah. Um, And the oh. wiki's fucking shit. <laughs> compared to the Morrowind wiki come on oh, yeah, the Morrowind wiki's re- like if the Morrowind wiki's better than the Skyrim wiki it's unreal think... how good it is well, tune, not in, tune in uh, tune in next week for go uh, game wiki <laughs> <laughs> Terraria would probably win yeah no Terraria does win hands down that's the opposite yeah. answer right uh, okay so that was your minute well oh, god mate that weirdly made it more difficult <laughs> Definitely did. Because the truth is, it's like 
Divinity Original Sin 2 sounds like the objective answer. Like, it's got a very well thought out, clever combat system. It's a lot of the things I like about an RPG other than turn based, which I fucking Does it have dis- quest markers? Does it have quest markers? It does. Uh, so, that's it decided. Um, <laughs> no. Um, look. Oh, fuck. Because Certain obviously. Sex. Oh no! Skeleton sex into the mic. How, how how many can you romance well, in? Can you romance in um yeah, in in Morrowind? No, you can't romance in Morrowind. Uh, well, that... not 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 really. There's like a couple quests where it's sort of comes up. You can kiss a but... guy in a really yeah. dodgy situation. There's, there's a really dodgy situation where you have to get some guy. It's like part of the main quest, and he's basically a creep. And he's like, "If you kiss me, I'll give you like my yes." And that's like how you get the ass. You have to kiss this random guy. <laughs> okay, nice. well, on that note, um, Divinity Original Sin is the winner. Um, just based cool. on the fact that I think what is the most compelling aspect of the human psyche, what makes the human condition tick, it's love. It's romance. Oh. And if that's not available to you in Morrowind, how can it possibly be as captivating and as an enthralling as a game where I can fuck a skeleton. It's just, it's not possible. I should have just picked like some sexy flash game as the winner then. No, 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 no. <laughs> Hold up. These are fucking just... sex simulator. Big nah, titty nah, nah. bouncing free. The romance in Divinity, this is not some video game smart. You can't just bang anything. You have to romance them over the course of like hours of gameplay. You've got to spend time with them. You've got to get them gifts. you got to do the full shabam. It's like a dating game. Like dating that's similar. real life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not escapism. That's just real life. What's up, baby? Can I want to hang? No, okay, right. Ask the next one. Right, well, anyway, that's it. That's final. Um, oh, Divinity yeah, well, Original Sin 2 is the greatest video game RPG of all time. I'm not going to... I've been, devil- been deliberately not saying the greatest RPG because I without doubt will fight on this hill until i'm blue in the face the best rpg is dungeons and dragons go fuck yourself yeah, it just is it just absolutely is it's a universe bigger than you could even fucking wrap your head around it's, it's just, not big in real life so it, it almost is it's, it's fucking not it's, it's everything real life is plus people's imaginations on top yeah well no it's not is it because the universe is always expanding so is your mum's arsehole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, that's it. That's, that's it. That's it. Uh, okay, that's on, that that bombshell. Bombshell. on that bombshell, bombshell, thanks for listening to Goats, the greatest podcast of all time. I hope you, we've given you some sort of sweet relief from the agony that is life for a couple of hours. Mm. Sorry that you've got to go back to it. Um, come role back to us. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed role playing as our friends for an hour. Um, we don't really like you. We haven't met some of you. Um, no, you like that. No, we actually, we, lo- we like all of you, genuinely. We love them. Um, Big fan of all of you. You want to kiss them? Okay. Their bony lips. Imagine there's a middle ground <laughs> in between those two two feelings. We're wanna somewhere shake in... your hand. Yeah, I want to <laughs> shake yeah. the hand of every man, woman, and child that listens. Um, and anyone in between. I'm just going to reset this. So, on the end of that, <laughs> thanks for listening. Um, I hope we provided some sweet relief from the agony that is life. Um, mm. Tune in next week where we're going to be discussing Summon. Summon. Oh, I can get up. I can get up. Vinny can want. get it up, and he can also find out what's up next week. Um, <laughs> I'm on absolute fire tonight. Do you know what it? <laughs> Got him. Do you know what? My jokes have been off the chain, mate. What your mum and your pedo? Yeah. We can either do live TV fail or card game. Live TV fail. <laughs> that's, that's two options. <laughs> Other than that's Pokemon game, but we already decided we're not going to do that. Does yeah. nine Does nine eleven count as a live TV fail? <laughs> oh no! Oh my. Right. I'm not coming back on this show again. Okay. <laughs> That's on the blooper reel. <laughs> right. Any- <laughs> oh, no. Right, on that. There's like an unedited version of this.
this go out somewhere? Yeah, YouTube. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. Right, I just want to say... I just want to say to all FBI agents listening, I am not affiliated with this group of people in any way. He is, he's the leader, mate. He's the gang leader. <laughs> I've never met these people in my life. He only writes... What to say? He only writes in Arabic, mate. He's fucking up there with the rest of them. Hey, listen, don't worry. We are, we're uncancelable. Also, Actually, Josh, be, no, be one's no one's listening. No one's listening. Yeah, that's also true. Um, right, so seriously, come back next week for the greatest live TV fail or whatever <laughs> else that we've chosen. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> we will need to call this something because we have run out of things. If that's, yeah. that's fine. <laughs> if that's what we're left with, that is the barrel. <laughs> Honestly, I think you guys should do Go Autism Project. <laughs> what? A few moments later. Anyway. It, yeah, it's just sad, that story. It's anyway, good. thank but, you for listening. It's time for us all to go. Love you, bye. Love thank you, bye. Josh, for coming on as well. Oh, yeah, thank you, Josh, thank for you coming Josh, on. Yeah. Love you all, bye. Bye, bye. Thank you, Josh. That was a great episode. Bye. Oh, God.